people have been lost during the Ukraine and Russian conflict. As of August 2024, the estimated total number of casualties in the Russia-Ukraine war is staggering, with significant losses on both sides. Approximately 315,000 Russian military personnel have been killed or injured, and Ukraine has suffered around 124,500 to 131,000 casualties. Additionally, civilian casualties are also high, with over 10,500 Ukrainian civilians reported dead since the beginning of the conflict in February 2022. These figures reflect the immense human cost of the ongoing conflict, which has no clear end in sight. The war continues to impact countless lives, both military and civilian, with the toll rising as the fighting persists. What is the population size of Russia and Ukraine? As of 2024, Russia population, approximately 143 million people. Ukraine population, approximately 36 million people. These numbers reflect the current estimated population sizes and may fluctuate due to various factors, including migration, birth rates, and the ongoing impact of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. What is the percentage of deaths for each country in relation to the total population size? The percentage of casualties in relation to the total population size for each country is as follows. Russia, approximately 0.2% of the population. Ukraine, approximately 0.36% of the population. These percentages reflect the proportion of the population that has been directly affected by the war through either death or injury. Which countries are supporting each country in the war efforts? In the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, various countries and organizations have aligned themselves in support of either side, providing military aid, economic assistance, or diplomatic backing. Here's a breakdown of the key countries supporting each side. Countries supporting Ukraine, United States, support, the U.S., has provided substantial military aid, including weapons, ammunition, and intelligence support. Economic and humanitarian assistance has also been significant. Role. The U.S. has led efforts to sanction Russia and isolate it diplomatically on the global stage. European Union EU member states support. Countries like Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Poland and others have supplied Ukraine with military equipment, financial aid and humanitarian assistance. The EU as a whole has imposed severe economic sanctions on Russia. Role. The EU has been instrumental in coordinating a unified response to the conflict, including diplomatic pressure and support for Ukrainian refugees. NATO support. NATO, as a collective defense organization, has provided military training, logistical support, and intelligence sharing to Ukraine. However, NATO has not engaged directly in combat. Role. NATO's presence in neighboring countries has been bolstered as a deterrence measure against potential Russian aggression beyond Ukraine. Canada support. Canada has sent military equipment, financial aid, and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. It has also been involved in training Ukrainian forces. Role Canada has been a vocal supporter of Ukraine in international forums and has imposed sanctions on Russia. Australia support. Australia has provided military aid, including armored vehicles and humanitarian support to Ukraine. Role Australia has imposed sanctions on Russia and has condemned its actions in international forums. Japan support. Japan has provided financial aid and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine and has imposed sanctions on Russia. Role Japan has supported Ukraine diplomatically, aligning with Western efforts to isolate Russia. Countries supporting Russia, Belarus support. Belarus has provided logistical and territorial support to Russian forces, allowing Russian troops to launch attacks from Belarusian territory. Role Belarus has been a close ally of Russia, supporting its military operations and aligning with Russian diplomatic positions. Iran support. Iran has reportedly supplied Russia with drones and other military equipment used in the conflict. Role. Iran's support has been more covert, providing military assistance while maintaining a complex diplomatic stance. North Korea. Support. North Korea has expressed political support for Russia, and there have been reports of potential military aid, although details are sparse. Role. North Korea's involvement has been limited, mainly providing symbolic support to Russia. China. Support. While not directly involved in military support, China has provided diplomatic backing to Russia and has been a significant trading partner, helping to mitigate the impact of Western sanctions. Role: China has called for negotiations and a peaceful resolution, but has resisted condemning Russia's actions, maintaining a neutral to supportive stance. Syria support. The Syrian government, led by Bashar al-Assad, has expressed strong political support for Russia. 
role, Syria has aligned itself diplomatically with Russia reflecting their close military and political ties. Other countries, India and Brazil have taken more neutral stances, calling for peace and dialogue while avoiding direct condemnation or support of either side. Many countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America have remained neutral or have expressed concerns about the conflict without taking strong positions in support of either Ukraine or Russia. The global response to the conflict is highly polarized, with Western countries and their allies largely backing Ukraine, while a smaller group of countries, mainly with existing strategic ties to Russia, have shown varying levels of support for Moscow. What mental, psychological and other types of damage occurred due to this war? The war between Russia and Ukraine has had profound and far-reaching impacts on individuals, families and communities, leading to a variety of mental, psychological, physical and social damages. Here's an overview of the different types of damage caused by the conflict. 1. Mental and Psychological Damage Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder PTSD Many survivors of the war experience PTSD, characterized by flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety and uncontrollable thoughts about the traumatic events they witnessed or endured. Depression and anxiety, the uncertainty, loss of loved ones, displacement and destruction caused by the war can lead to chronic depression and anxiety. These conditions are exacerbated by the ongoing stress of living in a war zone or as a refugee. Survivor's guilt. Individuals who survive traumatic events, particularly when others close to them do not, may experience feelings of guilt, questioning why they survive when others did not. Grief and loss. The loss of family members, friends, homes and livelihoods leads to deep grief, which can manifest in prolonged mourning, withdrawal from social interactions and difficulty finding meaning in life. Fear and hypervigilance, constant exposure to danger, can lead to a state of heightened alertness and fear, where individuals are constantly on edge, anticipating threats even in relatively safe environments. 2. Physical damage, injuries, many people have suffered severe injuries, including amputations, burns, and other life-altering conditions. The lack of medical infrastructure in conflict zones further complicates recovery. Disabilities, injuries from bombings, shootings, and other violent acts can result in permanent disabilities, impacting mobility, independence, and quality of life. Chronic health conditions. The war has led to an increase in chronic health conditions due to malnutrition, poor living conditions, and lack of access to medical care. 3. Social and community damage. Family separation. Families have been torn apart by the conflict, with many members being killed, missing, or displaced. This separation creates lasting emotional and psychological scars. Displacement and refugee crisis. Millions of people have been displaced, both internally within Ukraine and externally as refugees in other countries. This displacement leads to loss of homes, communities and cultural ties, and poses challenges in integrating into new environments. Breakdown of social structures. The war has disrupted social networks and community structures, leading to isolation, loss of social support, and weakened community resilience. Four. Economic damage, loss of livelihoods, the destruction of infrastructure, businesses and agricultural land has left many without jobs or income, leading to poverty and economic instability. Dependency on aid, many people have become dependent on humanitarian aid for survival, which can erode a sense of independence and dignity. Long-term economic instability, the war has caused significant economic damage, leading to long-term instability that can hinder recovery and development efforts for years or even decades. Five. Cultural and educational damage, destruction of cultural heritage, historic sites, museums, and cultural landmarks have been destroyed or damaged, leading to a loss of cultural identity and heritage. Disruption of education, schools have been destroyed or repurposed, and many children have been unable to attend school due to the conflict. This disruption in education can have long-term effects on a generation of children. Cultural displacement. The displacement of people from their homes often leads to a loss of cultural practices, languages, and traditions, as communities are scattered and weakened. 6. Spiritual damage, crisis of faith. The trauma and suffering caused by the war can lead individuals to question their faith or spiritual beliefs, leading to a spiritual crisis or a sense of hopelessness. Loss of religious structures, many places of worship have been destroyed or repurposed, depriving communities of their spiritual centers and sources of comfort. Seven. Moral and ethical damage, moral injury. Soldiers and civilians alike may experience moral injury, a deep sense of guilt and shame from actions taken during the war that violate their personal moral or ethical beliefs. Desensitization to violence, 
Continuous exposure to violence can lead to desensitization, where individuals become numb to suffering and loss, impacting their capacity for empathy and compassion. 8. Long-term intergenerational trauma. Trauma passed to future generations. The psychological impact of war can be passed down to future generations, as children inherit the trauma, fears, and unresolved grief of their parents and grandparents. Broken families and relationships, the social and psychological damage caused by the war can lead to fractured relationships and dysfunctional family dynamics, affecting children's development and future relationships. The ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine continues to inflict severe and multifaceted damage on individuals, families, and entire communities. The long-term consequences of this war will likely persist for generations, impacting mental health, social structures, and the overall well-being of those affected. How could both countries create resolutions for peace? Creating resolutions for peace between Russia and Ukraine is a complex and challenging process, requiring a multifaceted approach that addresses the underlying causes of the conflict, builds trust between the parties, and ensures long-term stability. Here are some key steps both countries could take to work towards peace. 1. Ceasefire agreement immediate goal. Both countries could agree to a comprehensive ceasefire to halt all military actions. This would create a necessary pause in hostilities and allow for diplomatic efforts to gain traction. Implementation, establishing demilitarized zones monitored by neutral international observers can help ensure compliance and build confidence between the parties. 2. Diplomatic negotiations peace talks. Both Russia and Ukraine could engage in direct peace talks, possibly mediated by neutral third parties or international organizations like the United Nations. The Organization for Security and CO Operation in Europe, OSCE, or trusted countries. Focus areas. The negotiations should focus on key issues such as territorial disputes, sovereignty, the status of contested regions like Crimea and Donbass, and security guarantees for both sides. 3. Mutual recognition of sovereignty respect for borders. Both countries could agree to respect each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity with clear internationally recognized borders. This might involve difficult compromises but would be essential for long-term peace, autonomy, and rights. Discussions could include granting special autonomy or protections to minority groups within contested regions, ensuring their cultural, linguistic, and political rights are respected. 4. Security Guarantees Non-Aggression Pact Both countries could agree to a non-aggression pact, ensuring that neither side will use force to resolve disputes in the future. International guarantees, involvement from international organizations or coalitions, could help provide security guarantees to both Russia and Ukraine, ensuring that both nations feel secure from external threats. 5. Economic cooperation and reconstruction. Economic collaboration. Both countries could explore ways to collaborate economically, benefiting from shared resources, trade, and infrastructure development. Economic interdependence can foster peace by creating mutual benefits. Reconstruction efforts, joint efforts to rebuild war-torn areas, possibly with international financial aid and expertise, could help restore normalcy and improve living conditions for affected populations. 6. Humanitarian assistance and reconciliation humanitarian aid. Both countries with international support could prioritize providing humanitarian assistance to displaced persons, refugees, and those affected by the conflict. This includes food, shelter, medical care, and psychological support. Reconciliation programs, initiatives to promote reconciliation, such as truth and reconciliation commissions, public apologies and programs that encourage dialogue and healing between communities, can help address the social and psychological scars of war. 7. Disarmament and demilitarization Gradual disarmament, both countries could agree to a phased reduction of military forces and heavy weaponry in contested areas, overseen by international observers to reduce the likelihood of future conflict. Demilitarized zones. Establishing demilitarized zones along borders or in contested areas can help reduce tensions and prevent accidental escalations. 8. Legal and political agreements. International treaties. Both countries could work towards legally binding international treaties that solidify the terms of peace, ensuring that they are respected by future governments. Political reforms. Discussions on political reforms within Ukraine particularly in regions with significant ethnic Russian populations, could help address some of the grievances that contributed to the conflict. 9. Engagement with civil society inclusion of civil society. 
Peace processes should involve not only government officials, but also civil society groups, including NGOs, religious leaders, and community organizations. This inclusion ensures that the peace process is representative and addresses the needs of all stakeholders.